Day before brew day and we're going to make up a yeast starter and in order to do that we need to have our ingredients list which is our yeast nutrient right there and we are going to use a safe LS04 yeast and our goal is to make a porter and this is supposed to be a good one for a porter and also we have a bag of dry malt extract more affectionately known as DME and as you can see we cut the ear off of the bag there already to make a pre-measured amount over there in the uh, shot glass and we measured it out because spin it around there that way there just so we can see the milliliters it's a pro to the camera yep that's approximately 100 milliliters and if you look at our urban meyer flask normally known as erlenmeyer but we're ohio state buckeye fans and therefore it will always be known as an urban meyer flask it measures out at about approximately 900 milliliters or so, a little above the 800. So when we add in the 100 of DME to 900 milliliters of water, we'll have around a 9 to 1 ratio. So approximately 10% DME to water. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and pour that DME in there and see if you can get it to pour in without getting it on the outside of the jug. That'll be the uh, fun part here. Put that back just a little bit. Yep, I got my handy dandy brew assistant, my son there. One day he'll be allowed to drink it, but right now he just gets to do the alchemy involved. All right, so there is our mixed up solution. We're going to uh, take it over to the stove and uh, put it on a boil. Be back in a minute. Get it to the stove and make sure to have one of our uh, handy dandy hot mitts. Put the uh, Urban Meyer flask on there to bring the uh, DME and water solution to a boil. As you can see there, it's now starting to boil. It's frothing up quite a bit. You have to watch out here because boil overs can happen uh, rapidly and can turn into a really sticky, hard to clean up mess. Um, after, after about 10 minutes, which we're going to shut off here in a minute, but after about 10 minutes, we'll come back on and show you where we're going to take it over to the sink which we prepared a hot water bath for and we're going to put it in a hot water bath to help cool it down and begin adding ice that's in that ice bucket there and uh, to bring it down. Now supposedly these Erlenmeyer flasks can be used straight from the burner to the uh, ice water solution without much risk of breaking them but I just don't want to take the risk today. Once I become more comfortable with this thing I'll probably do that in the future. But at the moment, we will uh, cut it off here, and we'll be back when we're ready to move it over to the uh, stir starter plate after it's, uh, or when it's about time to cool it off. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty hot. It's boiling pretty good. I'm going to uh, check my handy dandy laser level. Water's supposed to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level, I believe. It says 204, so I'd say that's pretty good. We're pretty much at a 10 minute mark. I think from here we're going to turn off the heat on the stove and relocate over to our cool down bath which is going to start as hot water and we're going to uh, quickly add ice to it to try to bring it down pretty quick. And so here goes boiling. Soak up the extra heat off the stove there. And I'm going to pick her up and check it. See how it does. It's kind of cooled down a little bit. And from there, I don't have an Erlenmeyer flask weight, which I got to get one. So I was a little worried. As you can see, it wobbles. They will, they will float and flop right over if you don't, uh, if you aren't careful. At this point, I think we're going to start adding ice and getting it to cool off. Try to get it down to about 70 degrees, which will be yeast pitching temperature. Alright? Mm -hmm. Is it hot now? No. 
top. Very it's top. cool and off a little bit. Yeah. I didn't think about the water level rising, so that was an example of what not to do. We do videos of what not to do all the time around here. <laughs> See, if I take it over the edge, maybe it'll be a little more stable since it's a little shallower there. Yeah, okay. Give it a few minutes to cool off again. We want to get it down to uh, 70 degrees, and uh, at that point, we'll be able to pitch our yeast. Now, one of the setup steps that I haven't performed that I should have done already is get out some aluminum foil, Reynolds wrap. Just a little sheet, a little sheet to make a lid for. Did you get burned? You sure? Okay. A little sheet um, to uh, put a, a, a fairly loose fitting cap. Whenever you do yeast, you're going to let it set for overnight or so. Some would say 12 hours, some say as much as 48 hours. Um, in my case, we're going to shoot for overnight, but you want to kind of cap it with some aluminum foil, and I just sprayed the uh, brewer's best friend, which is star sand, mixed in a uh, straight solution to make sure it's sanitized. Once you start getting your your beer products, anything to do with uh, that has to do with yeast, down to room temperature, you have to do, be an insane about sanitation because you're going to get your stuff infected if not. So at this point, I'm going to come over here, see how she feels underneath the water. Oh yeah, down below water level, it's nice and cool now finally. Yeah, I just want the bottle to fill off a little bit. So when you pitch the yeast, and it runs down the side of the bottle, <clears throat> the heat from the bottle doesn't kill it, or the Urban Meyer flask, I should say. I have to give it a little bit more ice, I don't know. Mm. It's getting there. A few more minutes and then we'll uh, relocate over to the stir, stir plate. Okay, I'm gonna check the temperature here and see what it says. Don't want to really pitch until it's around 70 something. Here it says I'm still at around 110 in the liquid. The vessel itself above the liquids in the 80s. Kind of let it, need to let it cool for another few minutes, I think. getting close. We checked the temperature when we brought it over. It was still in the uh, mid to upper 70s. Again, we're shooting for the low 70s. Preferably 70 would be perfect. Here, let me see the star sand once. Alright, so I'm going to break out the star sand here. Just give it a good shake so it foams up. Going to star sand my scissors. Star sand the yeast bag at the top anyway where I'm going to cut it. Again, uh, sanitation is a necessity in this here. And we got our little handy dandy stir that goes on the stir plate over there. Here, take that. Got to sanitize it. Which, which one's going to be your pitching fingers? Bring those fingers over here. Let's use the left fingers. Put your first and thumb right there. Let me get both sides of them and turn them over. Fingers. Okay. All right. So, this is Star Sands and Ingestible Sanitizer, by the way. Widely used in the brewing industry. Don't drink beer if you don't uh, like Star Sand because you're getting it every time you open a can. All right, go ahead and uh, slide that down in there. Try to let it slide along the edge as much as possible. Less of a chance of it knocking out the bottom. All right. And put that there like that. That'll be our stir, stir. It's over here on the edge. It's not in the middle. That's okay. We'll get to it in a minute. I'm going to take another quick temperature reading. So yeah, this laser thing's a little off sometimes. I 
I think this is accurate on glass is what it probably should be. I'm going to take a chance with this. I don't think I'm going to kill the yeast at this temperature, but I've never done it before. If it does, I'll have to pick up a new pack and start all over tomorrow. But now I'm going to basically take the SO4 English Ale yeast, tap it, make sure it's all out of the top, and tilt this up just a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. Move in a little bit closer. And I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, I guess. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut open the yeast. And try to pitch it all in there without hitting the side of the container. Oh, I did one mistake here. I was supposed to rehydrate the yeast first. So I might end up having to do this whole thing. Should have rehydrated it before I started the process. Now, this here is a yeast nutrient. It's made to go in five gallon batches at a half teaspoon. I'm just going to give it a little, little tiny sprinkle. A little bit of nutrients to go in with the food. Kind of like yeast vitamins, if you will. There's that and that. Now, we want to take our sanitary side that we just placed on the counter and give it another good spray. Alright, give it a real good spray since we put it on the counter just to make sure there ain't no yeasty bugs on there. The idea is you don't want any other natural occurring yeast in the air to land on your beer because they can run a competitive process against the brewer's yeast. And, um, Cause the problems, bad flavors, and they can actually even ruin the beer if, you, if they actually win the battle with the brewer's yeast. Now the idea is to create a, a seal so a bunch of stuff in can't fly in, but it's going to make CO2 and it's going to need oxygen. At least during the yeast multiplication process, you wouldn't want oxygen in your normal beer process, but in this process, it's not a big deal. Let's get this bad boy out of the way and see if we can. Well, it took a little bit of messing around to get it running right. But as you can see, the uh, stir plate with the potentiometer on the front there, which is used to adjust the uh, fan speed inside of the unit, the stir plate, um, it's got a whirlpool running. And basically, we'll let this run for around 24 hours. So when I get home from work tomorrow, I'm going to come home and do uh, my first brew day. And we'll take that yeast there. We'll store a little bit in several mason jars. And I uh, use the remaining to pitch into the fermenter and uh, we'll uh, let it do its magic in the fermenter for a week, maybe more.